2021 concept, and, and the, the Department of Water still is stacking there. And I, I, I will, I will have been interested to hear the Saga view of what is it that they say if, if the Department of Water and Sanitation is willing to give a relief fund to, to water ports, but it is not willing to give a refund to municipalities. Uh, what informs that view? Because the fact of the matter is that it, at, at the end of the process, whether you give water boards for them to can charge people, or whether you give municipalities in order for them to can pay in order for the people, our end users will suffer the consequence, the double jeopardy of the increments of the water boards and the increment of the municipalities. For instance, you will have realized that even when Salga must even tell us the reasons why, for instance, Ecolenia has increased 13% when in actual fact uh, we said there must be no increase. And, and, and if you look at, at, at we said that if there is increase, we can live with the, 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 the red water one, which was 6%. And that 6%, if you look into the total increment, only is found in um, one in one municipality, and, uh, which is the, um, I'm sure it is the, um, uh, I, 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 I don't write that name, but there is one area where 6% is, is, is implemented. But all others are far above that which Sarga came and, and said they can't afford. They said they can't afford and they can only afford 6%. And then we said that, that there'd be no increment, but they themselves have increased way above the 6% we are talking about. And, and now the... The, the report that the Department of Water and Sanitation is saying it on the strength of the non of the non increment by water boards to municipalities and the end users, we are going to spend 584 million rand to give to water boards to, to, to remain on float. The question I want to ask, and more especially on because look, I can see it and say it doesn't matter, Salga has agreed. We, we, we are not, it's just one of the um, a, 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 a processing process, a, a structure. We, we are still gonna have people who, who will not afford to pay the, 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 the increment against the backdrop of us having said there shall be no increment. I don't get the sense, why do we get this data score of having increased? I don't then we wanted to, we want to help the, 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 the water ports alone and not help municipalities. And Sanga is not speaking to that point because Sanga is moving from a premise that that matter is resolved. We are now looking at the one situation. And I have a problem with that approach. Jefferson, I might, maybe I'm lost, I don't know, but where I'm sitting, I don't get a sense that we are talking to the problems that we're facing as voters. The issue of whether we are going to have um, the the credit control being implemented and so on. We all know sitting here as, as politicians that next year is going to be elections time. All of you will change and say, uh, 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 lower down your, 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 your credit control because it is time for elections. So why, why are we fooling ourselves and believe that that's the solution? Because it's not a solution. And it does not help for us to want to impound the, the debt with the hope that can, we will get that can, you summarize, uh, can, can you summarize, Masheko? Can you summarize? Thank you. Thank you very much. Number, number two. Thank you. Thank you, Chaperson. Uh, good e evening to honorable members, ministers, DMs, and um, leaders of administration acting DGs and deputy DGs and SALGA uh, leadership. Good afternoon, uh, Chairperson. Chair. Good afternoon. I, 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 I listened to uh, the presentation, to both presentations. And here, we are in a danger 
that we find ourselves last time. Of individual entities representing themselves. And at a leadership level, we made proposals when we said, uh, please uh, go back again, try to integrate these areas so that we see how do we deal with the communities in unism. We deal with the uh, 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 poverty stricken communities in unism as we continue to consider the economic decline of the country. I think the, 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 the my, my, my dilemma now, my dilemma uh, is that I do not know what must I do because we presented all proposals that need to be considered. And the presentation as they are, they are coming individualistic as they were before. Now we are to start afresh again to do the discussions. Perhaps, Chair, maybe you, you would help us. How should we discuss this again? Because all the issues that we've raised are not yet dealt with in terms of a, a, a configuration and coordination by these three entities. So now, wh where are we in, in the process? But then if, if then we were to reopen the debate, I'm ready to discuss. But my problem is I'm still waiting for a coordinated presentation from the department and, and, and Salga. Thank you, Chair. What happened to our proposal? What happened? Um, they will respond, Honorable Sifai, Honorable uh, Minister Sisulu. Minister Sisulu. Yes, thank you. I was trying to find my unmute. Uh, am I audible, Chair? Yes, you are, ma'am. Yes. Uh, Chair, I was going to say uh, to the last speaker that it, it, it was inevitable that we would come to this because uh, the two departments that we're talking about have already had other meetings in between and we will continue consulting until we find each other. I don't think that we anticipated that by today we would have found each other. We had a very, very good um, discussion at the level of MINMEC. Uh, about uh, from Sue at the MINMEC. I think that uh, the presentation from Salga is, uh, is, is for more forward looking than we were at the last one. Uh, I think that we will need maybe one or two more meetings before we get to a point where we, we are all at one, because each of these, of these departments is looking after a different uh, constituency. Uh, not that our people are not our constituency, but we're looking at a different set of uh, problems that we're dealing with and we would like to have them solved. I want to thank Salga for the presentation. It gives us hope. It, move, it has moved significantly from the the one that we had in the MinMEC, and it has now begun to put forward some solutions. I'm just worried about the timeframes that Salga is putting forward for these, for these uh, uh, proposals, because ours, our, our need is yesterday. Our need is very great, and, and it, it's, it's, we, we, can't, we would need to revisit the timeframes that Salga is, is putting forward, even though we agree with them, that at least some step is, uh, is, is uh, some steps have been taken. However, there is in that presentation, a very important slide that uh, was put there. And uh, it puts parliamentary approval in inverted commas. And for me, that is a very important concept. And I'd like us to get back to that, to understand what does it mean? 
And why is in Salga is it in inverted commas? Uh, because it would unlock quite a number of things and it's a, quite a number of misunderstanding that have arisen between ourselves and, uh, and Treasury. Treasury is very clear about the responsibility of the departments vis-a-vis -vis, uh, you know, any other department or perhaps even parliament. So we need to be very clear exactly where do we in this particular forum stand in relation to determining what happens, what is our power in that, in, in that respect. And if we are agreed on that, it would be possible to bring Treasury on board to make sure that we are solving the same problem together. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Minister. Uh, Honorable uh, Mutambi. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Uh, we, I just want to join the queue as raised by Honorable Nancy Sikloi. We had a strong sentiment that emerged during our previous joint engagement on the issue at hand. And then we took a resolution that as Honorable Sistoy and the Honorable Mashiko have said that uh, we want the three, <coughs> the two departments together with Salga to come back with a, a consolidated presentation. Yes, I hear what the minister is saying, you know? that he, he, this is some of the matters that they are considering it. <clears throat> but then uh, we have the view that also by the same token, uh, we want them to, 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 to put this across to say, uh, the water boards are also in need of support in terms of government COVID-19 stimulus package to enable them to implement this, so, this zero tariff increase. Uh, then we are also aware of the fact that, uh, which is also common knowledge, that the water boards are not in the habit of receiving subsidies like other state organs such as municipalities. But then when you look at the presentation by the department, it also indicates that there's been no funding injected to assist the water board to cope with the stress of no tariff increase for the 2020-21 financial year. Uh, for us, we feel this is very much this regrettable because the benefits of a zero increase are not likely to accrue to residents if water boards do not have the financial capacity, consistent supply of the service. There needs to be careful consideration of on this with the view to striking the balance between relief to households and the future sustainability of water boards. Then one as one browses this presentation, the presentation then further reveals that according to a data age analysis of the water boards, the zero increase has had no impact on the settlement of the current accounts of municipality, let alone their historical debts. This is also very worrying because the expectation is that the zero increase will have afforded the opportunity some room to settle some of their water board debt. While we want to welcome the zero increase in bulk water tariffs for 2021, it is important to ask whether it is saving the intended purpose and whether the benefits really outweigh the costs. Uh, in this way, as and when there are these other issues, because I'm trying to raise it based on what the minister has just said, we should welcome the department's presentation as it then enlightened the joint committees on the implication of the no increase, as well as the possibility of unintended consequences. But I should think as we progress, if the questions is raised by the two colleagues that spoke to me, then we should also have to deal with this issue, deal with the politics of this uh, water tariffs. That's where I want to end each uh, person for now. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Rebecca Masala.
Thank you so much, uh, Chairperson. Although we know that uh, I think litigation, litigation is the last resort, the case of the court case in Madibeng is very interest, interesting. On the 7th, May 2019, the High Court of South Africa in the North Houghton Division found in favor of the Minister of Water and Sanitation against the Madibeng local municipality. In the court order, the judge acknowledged the amount of 32 million of water use charges and a further amount of 13 million for water research service. Has the department recouped these monies from the Madibeng local municipality after court order? Chairperson, an independent regulator is an option, but within the South African context, has its own pros and cons. Could the expert of this virtual meeting provide some insights on the viability of, an, of a regulator in South Africa? Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Nkosili Tuli, followed by Honorable uh, Rasson. Thank you, th thank you, Chair. Uh, on the other way, I'm well covered on the other side, but I got a, a little bit concerned out of this, Chair. One of these things, uh, is it the, the increment based on, uh, on the municipalities that or not? That's my answer. That's, that's my question I'm raising. If so, why NERSA was not a part and parcel of that conservation between, between the, the, the government entities, Salka and, and the other people who were, who were there. O only those two questions I'm, I'm, I'm asking. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Basson, and followed by Honorable Mkhotu. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, um, the department finds itself now between a rock and a hard place. We've got no choice to bail out water boards that is financially struggling because of the municipalities not paying uh, what they owe the water boards. And I want to support the minister, whereby she said we want a resolution or we need to resolve this as in yesterday. Because we're going to sit in a situation that if the department is not going to assist the water boards, the water boards will collapse. And that will collapse water infrastructure as well in the country. I, I, I really don't know why we are struggling with, with COCTA um, coming to the table, taking decisive decisions on, on payment on water. Yes, Chairperson, uh, uh, one of the members mentioned Mary Beng and a court case. You won't get that 32 million out of Mary Beng. There's, there's no water there. I, I spoke to the Premier of the province yesterday. It's we, we, week three now, and there's no water here. They, they, cannot, they cannot maintain the infrastructure. Who is running into the Crocodile River? I had a meeting with the administrator today. He did not pitch. He sent his, his uh, municipal manager. Um, they cannot pay overtime. Uh, people are not willing to take time off. So that's one municipality. It's happening all over the country. And at the end of the day, the Department of Water and Sanitation is, will have to assist the water board. Because the municipality is not going to pay. What are you going to sell? You're going to sell the buildings of the municipality? It's not allowed. Where are you going to get the money? 
So, so really, Chair, I, I, I want to plead and, and, and I want to support the minister on, on what she said. We need to get a, a solution on this problems now, not next year. Next year, I guarantee you when we sit with this meeting, to make it viable for, for water boards, we'll have to increase a huge amount to, to get them floating. And that is not the way to resolve this problem. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Mohoto. Um, Thank you, Chairperson. What form of intervention did Salga and the Department of Water and Sanitation come with in order to enable the municipalities to pay off their debts to the water boards, not forgetting that majority of the consumers of water have lost their jobs and, and may not afford to pay their areas. Uh, another question is, uh, the primary aim of the revision of raw water pricing strategy and norms and standards for tariffs is to provide an enabling framework for the provision of financial assistance and the use of water pricing to ensure and foster predictability and stability within the water and sanitation sector. Has the department during the revision process made an explicit need to balance debt and equity finance for investments? Given more clarity on the diversion of cash into short-term investments as applied by water boards, has the department considered a line item which incorporates cash, cash equivalents and short-term investments? Could the department provide more clarity on the policy for including impairments as an operating expenditure? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mkhotu. Honorable uh, Becky. Come uh, Chair, please, can I be, please, can I have your indulgence? Uh, let me okay. finish, please, Minister Yoka. Okay. Um, Honorable Becky. Um, Honorable Chair, no, I did not raise my hand, Chair. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, Minister. Maybe it's me who raised the hand. Big. Oh, big, you know? Oh, yes, the yeah. political head of Sal, Honorable Chair. Oh, Ukon. Yes, yes, the other oh. big without an Oh, so, okay, okay. Uh, you can come in, Bob. Uh, Minister, you'll, you'll follow the the political head of Salga. Uh, uh, thank, you, thank you very much, uh, Chair. And let me greet the Minister Kokta, uh, Minister of uh, Water Affairs, uh, DMs that are present, and the uh, leadership uh, of the both portfolio committees, uh, Kokta and um, Human Settlement and Water. <clears throat> I think our presentation, uh, Chair, is informed by the correspondence that we've got from uh, your, your office, which asked us uh, uh, certain questions in which they wanted us to respond to. And our response is a forward-looking response uh, because it is important uh, not to remain on on the on the stagnant environment as we are uh, seemingly we are finding ourselves in today the rate of the matter is that <clears throat> uh, the, the the all institutions of state they need some assistance in one or in one way or another uh, so that they are able to do their business as they are mandated to perform such uh, activities it it is it is a common cause of course uh, that members of parliament that goes to parliament because of election 
uh, if you send a message that coronavirus one acknowledge as it is today uh, because South African government it should be um, a responsive a responsible government uh, on its citizens and and I think within that context it will be important to to find solution on matters of this nature as as, as we as we have already said in in, in, in the in the presentation I think in the last discussion, we, we, we wish to concede that, yes, it was understood uh, that uh, parties must go back and the interest of the joint committee was uh, we must receive a, a, a joint uh, uh, presentation uh, that it must address uh, these issues. We, we said earlier on as an association, uh, we welcome the, 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 the zero base um, the water tariff uh, but it has also its own weaknesses and challenges going into the future. And I've been, um, as, a, as, a, as a member of the association, following the public participation of various uh, water boards. And uh, I, I noticed that there is a view that in the coming period, there will be a 15% increase. And uh, the, the hardship that the, the municipalities are facing and the community of South Africa is so immense and, and, and therefore it requires an immediate, an immediate action from the authorities uh, that it must intervene in the interest uh, of those that are receiving services uh, from government. Otherwise, uh, community is going to drift away from the interest of government and politics in South Africa and it might uh, satisfy a certain interest uh, of other groupings that uh, they are sitting somewhere uh, because they will they will wish to dislodge the the current state or current government because of their self a particular interest and that is why I think I agree with uh, Honorable Mutambi that it is important that we enter into a political debate about uh, the the water pricing and 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 its, its related matters uh, rather than being legalistic because legalistically. Uh, we may win a particular battle, but we are, we are not going to win the war. Uh, our interest, it must be about winning the war uh, and, and then battle. And of course, we must appreciate battles as we win going forward. But the, uh, the bigger uh, the focus and energy that we must put is to win the, the, the war that, is, that we are facing uh, going forward. Uh, I think that, that that is my first issue. And the last issue, Chair, is that um, <clears throat> challenges that are faced by municipalities and, and thereby uh, communities. Um, uh, because in, to a certain extent, the water is sold to municipality. Municipalities, in our own research, we find that uh, they are selling the same water uh, uh, without charging any mock-up price. And, and, and therefore, uh, the, the, the resources that they are getting from public is cross-subsidized from a municipality that is not generating any income. It's a matter that we all need to look at at the political level and provide answer to it because it's a challenge that is facing our communities. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Babangubane. Uh, Minister Sisulu. We'll close the minister. Had it? Yes, minister, you said you wanted to speak. You are given opportunity. I 
I think we're, 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 the minister's uh, network is the problem. Uh, we'll, she will be given time when she, could, when she comes in. Um, I'm going to add one question and then hand it over to Chair Mutami for him to get the response from the presenters. Um, just taking it from uh, where Honorable Sifai and Honorable Mutambi have left it in Mashahu. We expected the government to come to parliament and say um, we were called and um, we were requested not to increase the, the tariffs we have done that, but for now you are getting a report that is only about what about that you have done that municipality has increased um, and and the amount they are they are varied <laughs> and the issue that is raised by Honorable Masala of the independent regulator is becoming more important on on this matter because we cannot afford a situation where water become so expensive, unaffordable to our people, then we are going to have a crisis at some point. On the debt of municipality, uh, muni the debt that municipalities owe um, water bought. I think we, we, we should not get tired to engage with both the all the three departments, including treasury. We need treasury because our proposal, as Honorable Sifai was indicating, we're saying there was a proposal of topsizing um, and we're not getting whether um, it's not happening or it's still going to happen and what is the problem now. Um, and that's what that is worrisome uh, for me. If 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 we have delegated the department to go back and do the the work, and coming back to ask the same questions to us, it's a problem. So just to check the two things: what is happening with the proposal of the topizing to assist uh, both municipalities because. In the last meeting that we had uh, with the interministerial task team was to get treasury to assist in topsizing for the for what for water board and for municipalities because there are a lot of government departments that are all municipalities so that we are dealing with the with the debt but again we're saying that. As, as we leave that meeting, there should be an engagement that um, besides the debt, the old debt, there should be commitment for municipality to start paying what is due for, um, uh, uh, for, the, for the water that they, they, they get. So, and, and we don't get those answers. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit... Uh, Worried about the, I lose it the presentation. So, and, and just to get why municipality, I know that at the time we're taking decisions, municipality already have adopted the budget. But the question is um, are they going to do the same as what the water board has done or what is happening? Uh, maybe Saraka can respond to that. Um, as, as I hand it over to you, Chairperson Mutambi, and request members to mute your mic so that you don't interrupt the meeting. Uchelezi, your mic is disturbing us. Honorable Mutambi, you can take, take I'm over. Here. Take over. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here to, 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 to take over. Yes. Uh, 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 uh. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, 
as and when uh, they prepare to also respond to the issues as raised. Uh, because this is coming, uh, remember, we took a joint re resolution as a committee to reject the proposed tariff structure. And then the minister then instructed the zero increase of bulk water tariffs for the 2021 financial year in order to provide relief for households whose ability to pay for services has diminished based on the COVID-19 pandemic. Then the question out of that, which was no bull and good what the minister has done, we need to commend her for that. But then the issue also is and when the colleagues are ready to respond. On my side, one want to understand what has been the impact of the zero bulk water tariff increase on the annual salary increments of the water board's employees for this current financial year 2020-2021. Yes, that's the issue that we want to see. Also, the other issue, one of the motivation for implementing the zero bulk water tariffs uh, increase in this financial year was to prevent the municipalities from increasing their water tariffs in order to question residents whose ability to pay had diminished because of the COVID-19. I'm raising this to check also whether, because now you have seen in terms of the slide, somebody has raised it sharply. Is this zero tariff increase saving its purpose? If some uh, municipality has then gone aboard and then still approved the water tariffs. So these are the issues that one wants a clarity on. Can I hand over to the 18 DG and team? Then it would be Salga, then it would be the ministers commenting on these issues as raised by members. Can the DG, 18 DG team start to respond on the issues as raised? Thanks, uh, Honourable Matambi. Uh, thanks for that. Um, I'll just run through um, um, some of the areas. Can, can you hear me, uh, Chair? Can I go? Um, yes, I Chair, can. Just uh, in terms of uh, a question which uh, Honourable Mosheikha raised. I think, right DG, if you can also, I think, DG, if you can also yes, switch on the, uh, your video, you are live on Parliament Channel 4. It, they want to see your picture. How's that? Yes, that's better. Thank you. Thank you. Um, sure. uh, Honourable uh, uh, Honourable uh, Mutambi, uh, uh, just a question raised by uh, Honourable Mashekhu with regard to DWS willing to give relief to the water boards but not to municipalities. Um, it would never be the department's responsibility to give relief to the municipalities. That's done by National Treasury in terms of the uh, the Division of Revenue Act. The only reason that we're giving uh, a relief to the water boards, which is temporary relief, is to keep them in business because the water board had to close its doors because it wasn't uh, able to operate. The point of default would be the department, uh, with minister being the uh, minister, Susulu being the uh, shareholder representative for those uh, water boards. So the default uh, to, to the department, to the department. Um, the uh, uh, question raised by, I'm just going to run through those which I feel that I can respond to. The um, one issue raised by Honorable Rebecca Mosala, I will check on whether we actually did recover that 32 million from, uh, uh, from Muddy Beng, but I, I think uh, Honorable Besson gave quite a, a, a vivid impression of where uh, Madi Beng uh, stands at the moment. Uh, and uh, we, we, I think we'd need a, a much longer discussion around the independent regulator, which is also put forward by, uh, by Selga as one of the issues we need to uh, deal with uh, in, the, uh, in the longer term. Um, there were a number of balance sheet issues raised by Honor Mahoto. Uh, on a chair, if I could ask one of my water boards just to respond, uh, maybe Randwater. I, I see uh, a COO from Randwater is in, and he can just respond uh, to some of those balance sheet issues which uh, Honorable uh, uh, Mahoto uh, raised. 
um, to, you know, so I think I've, I've covered those questions, which, which I can. I'm unable to respond to the political uh, uh, questions, but uh, yes. those uh, ones uh, within my purview. So I would ask Randall to just to come in on the uh, balance sheet, and then there's some questions which I think Selga would be able to respond to. Thanks, Honourable Chair. Can we ask the colleague from the Rainwater Board to respond to the question as raised by Honourable Mohot? I'm going to turn my video off now, Chair. We are told there's a colleague from the Rainwood. Uh, Machidiso is going to come in. Yes. Yes, uh, uh, thank you, Acting DG. Um, I'm uh, Machidiso Nyembe, the CFO of Rainwater. I would like to um, pass our greetings to the Honorable Chair of the Joint Portfolio, Portfolio Committee session, the ministers, deputy ministers, as well as honorable members in the, in the session. Uh, the questions that have actually been raised relates to whether water boards, uh, as part of our funding structure, we do have in place uh, investments, cash and cash equivalents, um, investments, uh, uh, portfolios that are actually then now um, a way in the funds are actually invested, um, uh, taking into account the cash flow uh, uh, generating potential of the entity and matching you know, those cash flows with the different investment instruments. And that in turn uh, indeed is taken into account wherein we actually um, do make projections of the cash flows that will actually be generated at any point in time. And if there is um, additional uh, uh, cash inflows, those that are invested uh, appropriately within uh, utilizing an, an instrument that we could actually quickly uh, liquidate if there is any additional um, uh, cash uh, 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 that is actually required within um, uh, uh, the, uh, the organization. Um, and as well, you know, as part of our funding, you know, mechanisms, we do uh, take into account, you know, revenues that are internally generated through uh, 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 tariffs as well as looking at um, a debt, a external debt a, a, a financing to ensure that at least, you know, there is actually a matching of uh, the um, a funding um, a, that is required to, um, a, a, to, to actually support the capital a, a expenditure a, a requirement. Um, and a, ordinarily we would actually utilize uh, externally raised uh, a, a debt to actually fund um, a capital expenditure for new investments that are actually then now put in place um, and for current infrastructure that um, uh, is currently in place we would actually rely on a uh, tariff uh, 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 revenues because you actually sustaining the current uh, 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 demand and the maintenance and the refurbishment of that particular infrastructure will need to actually be covered by the revenue streams that are actually generated. However, if you are actually financing um, and you are building a new infrastructure to meet future demands, then we will actually match that uh, financing a, a, a requirement with externally a, a, a generated a, a debt. Indeed, in this current um, environment, we have seen a growing trend and increases in the impairment of, uh, of, 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 of debts as a result of the increasing default uh, um, uh, rates from uh, our customers. And the, the, the book, the, 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 the debt uh, book has actually increased to an extent that uh, the, uh, the doubtful debts are uh, and you know uh, cannot necessarily be absorbed by the um, uh, by the entities by the balance sheets of the entities and hence then it will actually require at least uh, to be a, a bit of a recovery from the tariffs that are actually then now uh, generated. 
ordinarily in normal circumstances, you know, uh, debt impairments, we were not necessarily recovering from tariffs, but because of the escalating uh, debt book, it is actually unaffordable to not actually uh, recover a portion of the debts that are actually being impaired, especially because there isn't any guarantees or that are actually provided by um, municipalities or government on how they are actually going to service the historically um, um, a debt that has actually um, the, 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 the historical debt that has actually been now grown. Thank you, Shane. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, EFO. Can we allow Salga to respond to the issues as raised by members? Okay. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, it's Humuta again, Letati. From, from Saga, um, and I must apologize in front, I've got network issues, I've been kicked out several times, but I've got my colleagues from Saga that would help if I'm kicked out during answering some of the questions. Maybe just to touch on the, the debt that's basically owed to water boards. Um, as I've had actually indicated in the presentation that we have only recently added water boards in terms of the multidisciplinarity um, on revenue committee, which will then also look at the structural issues in terms of the value chain. Um, and that also includes national treasury in terms of some of the proposals that have been put through around top slicing. So the comprehensive strategy is currently being looked into, which will also then be presented basically in the political task team. But basically what has happened up until this point in terms of even the process where uh, municipalities basically or ESCOM is that National Treasury has basically been tasked to make sure that all state departments, that all municipalities, whether it's on water or electricity, they basically pay for those services. We basically monitor in that process very closely to make sure that then it goes towards alleviating the pressure around um, debt that's basically owed to municipalities both to ESCOM and basically water board. So that's basically work in progress and we're not in the position at this point in time to respond comprehensively um, to, to the question that has basically been raised and but nevertheless that it has basically been flagged and we're basically focusing on it very closely. Then in terms of the setting of tariffs, so there's definitely challenges from a process point of view there are some municipalities that, that were able to absorb through the step up uh, approach in terms of tariff setting to absorb some of the increased costs around the various services. But of course, the same way that we had identified previously, there's basically inconsistencies in terms of applications and we definitely assessing that. Uh, and one of the things that we will actually be pushing for is to ensure that uh, basically the benefit um, is actually transferred to households because that was the intention of this entire discussion. But unfortunately, the process issues basically came in the way of, of, of that particular that particular process. And then in terms of the, the infrastructure aspects and the failing of infrastructure as well, it's an area that would also be focusing on very closely um, in terms of the upcoming budget Lakota that would also look at infrastructure and asset management and maintenance and put into through propositions in terms of how we deal with the issues around infrastructure backlog as well. And maybe just also to note um, that the issues around the various cases that are basically underway, whether it's related to ESCOM or is related to water boards and the practice also of the encumbrance of bank accounts of municipalities is also, that would also be an area of focus in terms of dealing with that. We've already started looking at it uh, from a SALGA perspective uh, in terms of how we deal with it around the sector to actually avoid municipalities that are already in uh, financially distressed to be spending additional money in terms of fighting some of these cases basically, basically in court. So on the issue around the revenue under recovery, which is one thing that we've actually observed in terms of the municipalities 
that we've seen revenue recover under recovery up to even 30% in terms of the netros. Uh, for the lower municipal, lower tier municipalities, it's also up to about 50%. So they're definitely struggling to collect under the current operating environment. And I think part of the relief, albeit it fell short of Salga's uh, expectations where we expected that the 20 billion that would have been allocated to local government would have been additional revenue all in all, but only to find out that only 11 billion was basically additional and as a multi-year allocation. And the rest basically is just the reallocation in terms of the other grants that have basically been allocated uh, uh, previously basically to local government. So the issue of funding for local government is actually a big issue, uh, which we have also seen that there's actually an, an increase in terms of unfunded budgets um, due to the difficulty of municipalities in terms of collecting under the current operating environment and the issues around the historical debt where the debtors book is already sitting at over 191 billion, which should also be an area of focus holistically around the multidisciplinary team on, 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 on revenue committee. Thank you, Chair. I hope I've covered uh, the questions that were basically leveled at Salga. If not, maybe some of my colleagues can assist in that particular regard. Thank you. Dekok, before I, I see Minister Matra was saying, it's up. Anything from Dekok side? Silence. Minister, Deputy Minister Matlow. Well, th thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, or uh, co chairs, I mean, uh, to the ministers, DMs, the DGs, CEOs, and chairs of the boards. Well, uh, Chairperson, probably some of the issues Trevor has responded to. But uh, let's clarify that uh, today's discussion on the matters arising, there is a limitation on scope, like uh, the presentation Trevor has prepared, including the other one that uh, he has to make. Uh, we were correctly chair yourself when you summed up. The last time we met, you appealed that the minister should go and reconsider the decision that has been made. And uh, Trevor's presentation has been able to indicate that uh, that request that you made, the minister did indeed uh, actually made a decision that uh, when it comes to the tariff, remember the tariffs is a three-tier system. Uh, there is a water resource uh, a tariff, which is a development charge. Then there's a bulk which uh, is related to water boards or other water service providers. And the last one, which is the retail, that is done by municipalities. Remember, those are the tariffs we are dealing with. In terms of uh, the presentation we've made today, Chairperson, it's going to be important that, including some of the questions uh, colleagues uh, you have asked, that the principle called the user pay principle is a very important principle for any service that is being rendered. And it's the principle that uh, we should always know that uh, because there will always be inputs for any service that has to be rendered, someone must be able to pay for that particular service. The very same thing with in question of water, because we're able to demonstrate what are the input in terms of water. In the main, you know that the issues of uh, infrastructure is one of the component, the issues of treatment that includes uh, your issues of uh, uh, electricity, which is more important, and then the issues of chemicals, including the labor cost. Then there is also the principle that the South African government, led by the ANC, has always taken the cushioning of the poor. In the cushioning of the poor, the free basic police on water, including electricity, remain. 
That's why even when the division of revenue is actually being taken into consideration, that coaching is always made available. Because sometimes we have a view that the poorest of the poor are going to bear the biggest burden for the increases. But in reality, the state has always made a provision. And the only problem we have is that those who are most vulnerable, they started to do what we call it overconsumption. If they actually started to consume more than what we actually made the provision. I thought I should be able to raise this principle because it's one of the discussion we raise amongst yourselves. Then the other issue we also raised with you was the question of the consultation process. And I was very happy that Salka, in as much as the timelines look very tight, if you look at the tariff process for 2021, 20, 2022, a presentation Trevor is still going to make, Chairperson, with the, your permission. The last time we had an issue that um, you are always coming at the tail end, it's a fatal assembly when the matter has been decided. One of the issues to discuss is to say, in as much as the prerogative to finally conclude lies with Minister Sisulu around water tariffs, especially the first two tariffs, uh, when do you do come in? Because as representatives of the people, you too, you have an important contribution to make. And I think that timetable is going to be very important before next year, ultimately, after all consultation with other stakeholders, these matters, they come into, into, into consideration. The other principle is what Trevor raised, which is norms and standard. What do we take into account when we do these uh, issues? Therefore, the two presentations, Chair, one, they confirm that your request was adhered to partially. There was a zero increase for bulk, but it only retained. Municipalities continued uh, to looking at their various uh, issues that uh, are empowered in terms of the MFMA. They actually increased from others from 4%, the highest is 21,5%. But when it comes to the water boss chair, which is what we said now, is that there have been unintended consequences. And Trevor has indicated the unintended consequences. And some of the unintended consequences are felt mostly by the water boards that are supporting rural provinces that uh, are actually also having rural municipalities that are most distressed. What has happened is that there is a, going to be a deferment of some of the capital projects that we should be able to note. And these are the implications even in terms of the outer year. In certain instances, there is also a postponement of some of these uh, projects that we need to do. But we also started to see the issues of the default. That's why the minister is looking as a shareholder to say, how do we support the water boards in the interim? Because ultimately, as on behalf of the shareholder, that problem needs to be dealt with. And in the correspondence we received, Chair, you wanted to know how are we dealing with this impact on the water boards. The two ministers, as Minister Sisulu indicated, they convened a joint minimum last week. This matter was discussed. And ultimately, there are teams that have been put in place that Trevor and others, they are continuously engaging because we have to be in a position to know that the outstanding debts of 120 days, 90 days, 60 days, and 30 days, the municipalities has to be able to be supported that indeed they pay because if they don't pay, the situation that uh, we have seen with ESCOM, honorable person is correct. The situation is going to be very dire and the consequences very hard. I think on what we have actually requested, we've done that particular point, Chair. Safe to, to say, unfortunately, some of my colleagues who raise matters very sharply from Salka politically are not here because it's an important matter to say, you came, you protested, you asked, 
but we have never reciprocated. But there will also be probably a reason why that could not happen. And remember, we could not be in a position at the time when we spoke that municipalities in terms of the intervention by the state of the 20 billion rent. And Salka has correctly explained that that money in the main was the money that anyway belong to municipalities, they to go back to municipalities. We could not be in a position like Trevor, you have also said that you should tap in that particular money. The question, Honorable Rebecca, of independent regulator, it has been discussed as part of the broader issue the IMTT is looking at. And remember, we have said there is no uh, actually a disagreement in principle, but the modalities on how to incubate it and how to move, because uh, Honorable Ndabezita uh, Obabul uh, told, uh, the regulation for, for water is not the same for electricity, which is regulated by NASA, and it has an ad. If you want to do an independent economic regulator, at a particular point, it will require also a parliamentary process or a regulatory process to have a piece of legislation to do to guide that particular process. The issue of top slicing, Honorable Mashiko and Chem, we could not today discuss those other issues because uh, we're directed on only two matters. But it's one of the matters that uh, we do agree that uh, it is outstanding. Uh, I think uh, I've responded on the question of honorable hood, the principle of vulnerable people to say they're unable to pay. We have a responsibility to engage that all of us, we must be able to pay those who can pay. But second, we must also be in a position to use either water or electricity wisely. Those people are vulnerable to the AMP police, which is the police of government, the three basic services police has not actually been declared by government. And the financial provision, including the indigenous police, they are able to look at some of those particular issues. I thought, for so, a uh, comrade chair, we should be able to say to members, we are not trying to create a confusion. There has been a lot of engagement, and you could even start to see that in streamlining processes going forward, we are starting to actually come to a path where we are starting to find each other. But the fundamental issue of the debts owed to municipalities and the debts owed to water boards is one of the biggest challenges of our time. And we need all our wisdom to say, what do we do collectively to ensure that municipalities that are in distress, they don't pass the stress to the water boards. Because if these water boards, they fade, the biggest challenge of electricity you see, it will be like a picnic, a, a, a comrade chair. With those words, Chairperson, I want to thank you. Thank you, Deputy Minister Matlovo. Deputy Minister Tau. Uh, th thank you very much, Honorable Chair, uh, and your coach, uh, Ministers, dear Mashobo, Honorable Members and colleagues. Just a few comments on my side, and possibly starting by picking up on the point raised towards the end by, by dear Mashobo, which is the importance of the water resource. <clears throat> and our collective responsibility to manage it in a manner that is both judicious and sustainable, I think is an important issue that we need to keep at the back of our minds uh, because the risk, I think, of not managing the resource well is such that it presents significant challenges to the country uh, both in terms of uh, its its growth, but also in terms of access to a basic resource such as water. Now, why am I saying this, Honorable Chair? I think that uh, in the entire water value chain, we need to collectively engage, and I think the committees have said all departments that are relevant uh, should be part of this conversation. We need to adequately engage with the question, how do we protect the resources and ensure its long 
long-term sustainability and how do we ensure the sustainability of the institutions that have been assigned the responsibility of managing the resource ranging from TCTA to the water ports to uh, the municipalities. And it seems that there are a number of gaps that have emerged to the extent that these are impacting on, on the long-term sustainability of the resource and thus um, the risk of the water ports being unable to sustain their, long, their medium to long-term provision of the water resource. And in this discussion, there are issues that are emerging that require our collective attention, I believe. The first relates to a basic matter that when, when the committees advised that uh, there needs to be a reconsideration of tariff increases for water ports, <clears throat> the message did not adequately cascade to municipalities. So you've had an increase that has impacted on the consumers, uh, but the municipalities are not feeling the impact because when municipalities calculate their tariffs, they take into account bulk water charges. And that point needs to be flagged because it needs to be part of the consideration of the tariff framework going into the new uh, financial year, the extent to which municipalities had factored in bulk charges that have not been extended to them. And it's something that we have to resolve, of course, on a case by case basis, but as a general rule, something, something that needs um, attention lest the consumer becomes disadvantaged because of this situation and, and they get a double win. A related issue chair is the, the financial position of the water ports and the risk that presents to not just the water ports, but to the entire industry and indeed to the entire country to the extent that there are covenants and I don't know the detail but it's from the presentations. There are governance that govern the loans and bonds that they've raised <clears throat> and the risk when they get into a financial difficulty of them defaulting on their loans is a risk that extends not just to that individual port, but extends to the industry and the country. So we do need to protect the financial viability of these institutions and it requires an overarching response akin to the response that we have had with regards to ESCOM uh, that says, how do we ensure that we do not get ourselves into a crisis, but one that acknowledges that there is a responsibility on all parties, including municipalities to ensure that they meet their obligations. And I do think that it is important that we do say collectively here together with our colleagues in Salka that not all instances of default by municipalities are for reasons that are explicable. So there are municipalities that necessarily shouldn't be defaulting, but that see defaulting on bulk charges as the first area in which they can reprioritize. And we need to ensure that those municipalities meet their own obligations so that we do not sustain this situation that can lead us into a significant crisis. So, so I do believe, Honorable Chair, that a case-by-case -case response is important on all these matters in as much as it is important that we give an overarching policy response to what needs to be done to resolve the situation once and for all. And as indicated, there's a process that was agreed to at MINMEC this past Friday and we should be able to give feedback on the basis of progress that's been made where we've agreed that technically there would be a process that would report back to the political principles on what needs to be done. And this was a joint minwork. Um, so, so that process should enable us to get feedback. The second is a point that Ms. Nisati raised uh, from Salga, which is that in the political task team that's headed by the deputy president, that was assigned the task to address the ESCOM situation. A multidisciplinary revenue committee 
has been established. And the agreement is that now this revenue committee should also focus on the debt, not just to ESCOM by municipalities. Of course, it's dealing with more than that, but it should also include uh, the water ports in terms of developing a comprehensive response. I, I can confirm that uh, uh, the, the multidisciplinary disciplinary revenue committee has started to report in terms of a process to develop a comprehensive response. And at the appropriate time, and I wish that this could be soon, we should be able to come back and give a detailed report. But uh, the work currently is still at, an, at a preliminary stage, so it would be premature, honorable chair, to even present it here. But at the right time, we should be able to come and say, this is a comprehensive response to how we deal with the overall revenue situation that impacts both municipalities and the bulk service providers. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you so much, Deputy Minister Dau. Minister Zuma, is there anything that you want to say before I hand over to Minister Sisulu? Uh, thank you. <coughs> thank you very much, Chair. Um, I think I'm covered mainly by Deputy Minister Dau and Mashobo. But I also just want to say, in terms of departments not paying the municipalities, and the, the, that discussion is taking place. But I think it would help to involve Treasury because at the end of the day, it's only it's Treasury that can effect the, the top slicing from departments that owe, or even from provinces that owe. So I think at some stage, we might need to involve Treasury. But otherwise, we are, <clears throat> As, as Deputy Minister Dao and Minister Sisulu said, we, we are attending to these matters. They are not a bit complex, but we have put our teams together, both um, water and sanitation, SALGA and ourselves, technical teams that must report to us very soon about uh, what to do with some of these issues. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Kamenizuma. Minister Susumu, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, I have been covered. We have been at this for a long time, and we're still going to be at this for a long time. Um, I, I don't uh, right now have answers for most of the questions that you have, uh, and we will be attending to them. But here is something that I want to put across to members of parliament. You, you have in you the power to make suggestions. You've made suggestions to us when we brought uh, the, the tariffs, the tariffs uh, to you the first time that we, our intention to raise tariffs. You said, no, we're not going to do this. Can you not see that our people are poverty stricken? They are struck with this pandemic called COVID. We're not going to allow that. We accepted it, it made sense. At that point, you yourselves would have tried to work out, so how, how, do, how do the water boards survive after this? But we're not finding that. It's as though the answers need to come only from us. The answers need to come from us and yourselves, members of parliament, on how we move forward on this matter. It's a difficult matter and uh, we, we, just, we are finding that most of the time we are provide, you are demanding of us to provide the, 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 the answers. No, we are also looking to you to provide answers. The first step was taken by yourselves. We followed suit and we're glad that you uh, have uh, indicated gratitude for that. But we're in this situation now, all of us, the entire country, the municipalities, the water boards have written to me, they're, they're not able, they're not coping. The statistics that were showed there by, by Salga would indicate to you just how, how damaging the, the debt is for my water boards. They're not surviving. 
they're going under. We've got to find a way in which to rescue them. We can't rescue them because uh, Treasury says, well, I didn't give you permission to uh, not raise the, the tariffs. And uh, Parliament has no right to make any demands. That is why I was asking about what is the constitutional responsibility space of, of Parliament? If Parliament says, you will, we will not allow you to raise tariffs. We follow suit because that is the final step. And Treasury has responded to that to say, no, you, did, you should have raised the tariffs. You would not be in this situation. And we're finding ourselves caught in this situation because it was necessary, because nobody anticipated there would be COVID, but we responded to the situation that we, all of us find ourselves in. We're asking members of parliament to also come on board and say, you know, we think you could do this. We didn't get ourselves here on our own. And we would be grateful for some time with you on yourself, with, with, within yourselves to work out how do we help, how do we help these departments? Thank you very much, your person, for the time you've given us. Okay. Colleagues, do I have colleagues who want to make follow-ups? I think this will all the ends unless I honorable Nancy Sisley. And Honorable Mashifo, you still want to comment, make follow up questions? Honorable Nancy? Hey, they uh, never lowered their hands. Okay, we, 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 we can have a last say at the end. Yes. Matlova has lowered his hands, that's why he's saying, but you are two hands are still up on the system. I wanted to check. Okay. Yes. We, 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 we are affected uh, with the, uh, the IT uh, illiteracy. The same hey, icon I think we, where we, you we, raise your hand, there is a icon that say lower your hand. Once you finish speaking, you go to lower your hand. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Just to say, Chairperson, I think we, we, we got what we were we, we were expecting. We wanted these responses in terms of where did the debate land to? What is being said by all the responsible uh, entities that we to discuss? I think that there's clarity in terms of what uh, the Kopta DM uh, Dao has raised in terms of consolidating the whole debate and be able to relook on how best can we address the matter. The matter is very, very complex. That is why we said everyone must speak. We did make our own inputs. And in terms of what DM Dao has raised, I think some of our inputs have been considered in, in the matter. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Nancy Stray. Honorable Mashiko, you still wanted to say something? I do, I do, I do. Okay. Let me, yeah, um, Chair, I think the point I want to make uh, is that uh, my worry is we, we behave as if we have got luxury to can say to our mandates that give us or people that expect us to, to do and work on their behalf. Um, that um, it is maybe the, the department might say, it, we tried our best, Salga did not, or Salga said we tried our best, the Department of Water and Santé did not. I don't think we've got that luxury, Chair. One of the reasons why we met and said that uh, there must be a way of wanting to put a cushion on the pain of, of, uh, of the high payment by voters, in this case, by end users. It was on the basis of us saying, on, on, on behalf of them, because they voted us into office, we believe that there is poverty that is uh, very clear and something must give in. 
And I hear what Minister Sisulu is saying that uh, we must give also answers as members of parliament. And this, this is what we try to want to do. I haven't heard Salga saying to ourselves, because in that meeting of June, we, we agreed that um, we want the, we want that municipalities must hold their meetings and have a, a, a concede, to concede that they are incremented downwards, given the fact that the Minister of Finance has even done so himself. We are sitting with a situation where Salga, they, they even without understanding, um, they continued to increase. And that we are not given the reasons why and what is the, 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 the benefit thereof. Secondly, I, I did raise this point with the, when uh, Bob Marshall was starting to make input that Bob Marshall, what is the intended intention of the presentation of a Department of Water and Sanitation that does not take cognizance of the input as, as we made in June meeting? And if it, it, now we are still saying to ourselves, let's live with it because uh, uh, it, the, the process has gone past us. The fact of the matter is that we are ballooning the debt from our end users. We are ballooning the debt from, from municipalities, that debt which shall not be, be afforded to be paid. What is our intervention in doing that thing? Because uh, tomorrow we are going for, 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 for by-elections. We're still going to be asked the same thing. Our water is expensive uh, and, and, and our electricity is expensive. We are going for, 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 for local government elections next year. We will be asked the same way. We, we have got no luxury to go and say, uh, we tried our best, but the system does not allow us to act differently. I do not get the sense that we want to do the... Uh, the unusuals in trying to want, because if we continue this trend that each and every year we shall have a commodity that is water, which is in actual fact, the minister, the minister of water, it is her sole responsibility to supply water to, to people of South Africa. She has decided that she will form a, a, a water board to do that, which was, and, and that is commodifying water in a way. But once we outprice that commodity that is life, at some point, th those people that we are trying to serve on their behalf will not afford it. So, uh, uh, Member Stofile, Councillor Stofile was saying to herself, and uh, 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 you, Jefferson, said, let's talk the politics of what is it we are doing when we consistently just increase tariffs without talking the politics of, of the consequence of those particular increments. I do not get the sense, the Chair, that in, in this form the committees, the Water and Sanitation, Coxa, Salga, and ourselves, we recognize that at some point we will have nobody to serve. People will have ditched us because we are not doing anything for them, but rather for the system and the process, which to me is a problem. I want to hear as saying, what is it we are going to do differently in order for us not to be teached by our people because we are no longer doing service for them? Because in, the, in our way of thinking and the way of doing, we behave as if we have got luxury to can say, it's not us, systems has gone past us. I don't think we do. We, we do not have that chair. I, I, I think we, we, we need to do more. In, in, in responding to Minister Susul when he says, Ours is, is not tomorrow, it is yesterday, to address the problems that we have of people that are not affording to pay, municipalities that are not affording to collect, water bottles that are not uh, affording to collect. What are we doing? And what is the intervention we want to do? The intervention we want to do, we, we said last, in the last meeting in June, please don't increase because you are going to escalate the, the, the debt. Salaga has went and increased, even if we have done that. And now the boards are now given um, 600 million rand in order for them to remain having increased, even if it is not necessarily coming from the, 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 the voters. But then the price is consistently going far away from 
our basic needs of the pay, basic payment level. One way or the other, at some point in, in front of us, people will not afford to, to pay for our water. What will happen? I don't get a sense that we realize that we, we are busy drifting away from being a people's representatives or people representatives, but unto system representatives. That system will come to an end at some point when there are, there's no body to, to listen to us and still want to vote us into, into just managing their life because we are, we are no longer doing it on their behalf. Chairperson, thanks. Yes, before I allow Salga to say something, I see Chairperson, I've noted you also, Chairperson Sminya. But this issue that the minister is raising, as I said earlier, we, we are worried that to say, yes, there was no, the zero increase in bulk, but then the issue was around, there was no funding injected to assist the water boards. To, to then cope with the stress of no tariff increase. And then my worry is that now we are talking. Our resolution in June was that Treasury, together with the two departments, including Salga, must go and work together. Still here today, there's no presentation from Treasury. And the way Minister Susulu puts it, it seems as if Treasury is another institution outside of government, then these are the issues that I think we need to address because then I really don't know in which a, in, in which planet does this treasury department live, if then we will fail to respond uh, to the issues that are bread and butter issues. Issues of water is life. And then, then you, you sit with the situation where in Water boards, as I've said earlier, are not given allocations to sustain themselves. So these are some of the issues that I think we need to confront. Then I'll hand over to Councillor Stofile to raise the issues and also respond to the issues as raised by Honorable Mashiho. Then the chairperson will follow. In a way, we are trying to also determine a way forward as Minister Sisolo has asked us to do something about this. Uh, thank, you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair. And once again, greetings to, to leadership ministers, deputy ministers, <clears throat> and members of parliament. <clears throat> uh, earlier on, I understood that uh, uh, acting uh, DG in the department when he was making a presentation was to switch on his camera uh, because the debate or discussion is, uh, is live. <clears throat> and, and I would imagine uh, voters who are listening to this debate and I'm wondering why what you is going through in their mind. Can't tell us the feeling. I'm wondering why you're not doing it because everybody yes, is doing it with the exception of yourself. I've, do, I've done that. Uh, I've done that. I've been trying to do it. I've, I've been trying to do that. I'm saying, I'm wondering what is going through to the minds of voters. Uh, I was uh, reliably told earlier on when the acting DG was making presentation. That this discussion is listened to. See, much uh, late. Uh, or is it, uh, you seem to, to asleep. Uh, to, to, Can you sit properly? <laughs> sit I'm there. in the car because I'm a but counselor. I'm working. That's better now. Uh, <clears throat> the, the, the issue, Chair, why I'm raising, I'm wondering what is going through the minds of uh, the voters is that I'm listening with pain that uh, it seemingly there is some sense of uh, little God seated somewhere that his responsibility is to dispense resources uh, is not integral part of the finding solutions uh, as the country faces solution earlier or contribution that <clears throat> Uh, directives that 
society, it must follow a, a conventional way of conducting themselves uh, in facing the, the COVID-19 charges by washing hands, mask, distancing, and so on. Now, Minister Sisulu Salamand, having been asked or advised by parliament uh, that look into the current uh, co political conditions or socioeconomic conditions that we are facing in South Africa today. And, and parliament viewed that it is paramount important not to increase tariffs. And uh, at the back of that uh, issue that uh, the Minister Sisulu is presenting, then said, uh, if then you don't increase tariffs, then you will have a problem. And uh, one way of uh, resolving that problem is to create a buffer uh, wherein uh, you will be um, um, easing uh, the, the, the loss of income, uh, not increasing. And in, in that process, uh, National Treasurer says, uh, no, but you did not get the mandate. But who is who in the zoo? Is it Parliament or National Treasurer? Who informs the politics and the program? Who is accounting to who in this situation? It makes us a little bit confused in the local government sector because <clears throat> our understanding is that representatives are elected to represent the interests and the aspirations of the people of South Africa. And uh, in, in, in acting uh, in the best interest of people of South Africa is to think and lead them in, in dealing with the challenges that they are facing uh, from time to time. And they're expecting their government and their parliamentarians uh, to act as such to the best interest of, of that. This- Councillor uh, Stofile, it, it resuscitated. Can you then switch off your video because we can't even see you. Maybe with the video we'll be able to, to hear you. We're just seeing this. That's better. Unless you move up a bit. Let me stop, Chair. Okay, Let me stop the car. Yes. Is it okay? That's better. That's better. Now we okay. can see you. Okay. Well, thank you very much, sir. Sure. I, I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, Chair, it, it goes back to the debate have in your portfolio committee. South African government, cooperative way of governing the country. Because South African government understood that there is no sphere of government will be able to succeed to achieve its goal without working cooperatively in addressing the immense challenges that are faced by society, uh, which are voters that made us to be in offices today. And, and, and for that reason, South African government then established cooperative governance framework, uh, fostering government in all levels to work together in addressing the service delivery challenges that are faced to, uh, by a community. Part of that service delivery challenge is this issue of water tariffs and many other issues pertaining to this. Now, the, 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 the issue raised by Minister Sisu then reflects to me, uh, and, and of course to an ordinary citizen, South African listening to this, uh, and therefore we are not um, uh, complying with the laws that we have adopted that we need to work cooperatively. And that is why today we are sitting with a problem here. There's no pro uh, presentation from the National Treasurer. There was no pro uh, presentation from National Treasurer even in the previous meetings. And there will be no presentation from National Treasurer from that. In fact, I must say, and, and it's good for me to say this because it's a very important thing that we in the local government sector, we are worried about. Is this operation in silos uh, of other departments that are more important. I think uh, the, the, the Honorable Masiko is as super departments than other departments. 
people that are suffering are voters that are made us to be where we are today, not about uh, uh, offices that we are occupying. And this is our view that it is important for us to change for the best interest of our people to be always understanding that we had to work cooperatively in facing the challenges that we are facing today. I think going uh, to the question asked by um, uh, Honorable Mashiko, the, the challenge, there are, there are a few challenges. One, looking on my earlier discussion with, my, with the portfolio committee, COGTA, which we are accountable to, is that the, the frame of South African Local Government Association, its responsibility is to advocate, represent the local government sector. Now, part of the discussions that we had at the time, we communicate with the member municipalities about what is likely to happen and how should they prepare themselves uh, in responding to what is likely to happen. And they always ask a question, and fortunately, some of you, you are counselors, that you have a predetermined processes of budgeting, and part of that budgeting is to have a public participation. Now, if these issues, you don't follow them through in terms of the MFMA, the bigger question that is going to come and sit with our doors from the, 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 the Auditor General and National Treasurer. So the issue here that I'm, I'm driving home, Chair, is our inability as a state to work cooperatively in dealing with conf and confront the challenges that we are facing. And we, we act as super areas that are protected to us. And that is why I agree with the sentiment that unless we, we pull out this being systemic to, 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 to represent the interest of the system rather than representing the interest of the people. And that is why the people chose people to represent them to legislature, to council, to parliament, so that they make laws. And all of us will be, uh, comply with those laws. And we can only comply to those laws if we work cooperatively. And that is my take on this issue, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable, uh, Honorable Councillor Stofile. I see now my hands are starting to increase on the on the raise and uh, platform. Can you switch off your video, uh, Councillor Stofile, so that we allow the next speaker being the chairperson, chairperson Smenya. Honorable Tseki will come after the chairperson. No, no, Chair, I wanted to, to remind you that we still have another presentation. Uh, yeah. And it's to ten. Uh, we should, um, because we are not concluding on these issues, because mm. uh, the report mm. on the on its own has not has not re re give us the results that we expected as members of parliament. But we are agreeing that there is a a process that has been started. <clears throat> what we can just ask particularly the two ministers, is to increase the pace. Um, and, and, and if we are able to get the two department and Falga to work together, we can then be able to draw tre treasury. Uh, <coughs> Minister Susulu, um, I think oh, DM, DM was a treasury. David Masondo was part of the first, one of the meeting of the deputy minister. I think they should continue to, to, to engage treasury so that they, they, they would be understanding. And, and I understand the frustration of treasury. It's like all of us, because the, the situation of the country, it's, it's, it's bad uh, and we need all of us putting uh, uh, collective efforts to, re to resolve uh, these challenges. So I think if the two departments and the Salga can 
uh, speed up the process of closing the loopholes and dealing with what they are supposed to have dealt with. And, and if Treasury is not responding, there is a portfolio committee, standing committee on appropriation, which is responsible for, for allocation of resources and which Treasury accounts to, we can then involve them if, if, if we're not getting joy from Treasury. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm appealing that the, the, the two ministers and their deputies and Salga, they should actually um, clean their houses, um, develop a, 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 a responsive plan on this matter. And, and, and therefore, as we're going to meet again, if national treasury is not responding, we can then draw in the appropriations uh, standing committee. And, and, and in my view, there's nothing that should, should, should not be resolved. We are members of parliament elected to resolve challenges that are affecting our people. Chair, and I, I wanted to say, can we consider uh, getting the last presentation so that we, we are not out of our time? Thank you. Okay, before I hand over, I think Honorable Seki wanted to also propose a way forward. That's fair enough. So thank you, I thank you, Chair. Uh, in, so, indeed, Chair, I was getting worried about the length we have given to this item, because according to me, it was closed long time. Chair, can I propose that we should get a report on the 8th of December? on the same joint meeting of, of, of the clear way forward on how this matter is going to be resolved. Whether it will in Treasury will be involved in that meeting, it's okay. But I think the two portfolio committees must, I would propose that let's put the eighth, if it have to happen at night, let it be so. And then uh, we're able to get a report. Thank you. In so doing, we'll also then invite National Treasury to come and account before this joint committee on, the, on their refusal to inject funds on the water boards. I think that's the resolution. Can I then allow the next presentation to be kickstarted in so doing? I'm handing over back to the chairperson, to the other chairperson. Thank you. The parliament lies on the fifth, why the eighth? Yes, that's the other matter. I thought maybe when he's proposing, there's been an extension. But we'll look at the dates, as long as we know that it's a proposed date. Let's look at that before this parliament rises. I think that's the recommendation by Honorable Zik. Thank Can you very much, Chair. Yes, you, you, got, you got me, Chair. Thank you. Yes. Can the next presenter then uh, zoom in the presentation and present? Then the chairperson will take over after the presentation. Honourable Chair, thank you. If I could just be given a, a facility to share the screen again, and I will pull up the presentation. So I think it should be up. Um, there I have it. Um, full screen. Uh, uh, Honourable Chair, thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to give uh, some feedback on the consultation process for the 2021-22 uh, financial year raw water tariffs. Um, I'm just going to, I'll do the introduction and then go to the, uh, just give a summary on the consultations that have taken place. And then I will ask one of my colleagues, uh, Mashidi, to come in uh, just to talk around the quantum of the, uh, of, of the increase. The contents, you've got it in the slide presentation. So it's, uh, the purpose is to consult with the uh, uh, portfolio committee on the uh, joint portfolio committee on the raw water charges for 2021-22. I'll just give some of the acronyms that are used there. Uh, we could go back to that if there's any 
acronym that uh, we tend to talk in acronyms that you can see who we're talking about. In terms of the value chain, this is the same value chain uh, which I referred to when I did the, uh, the previous presentation uh, uh, with the uh, uh, seven steps. So, Honourable Chair, in the, uh, in the uh, interests of time, I'm not going to go through that uh, a second time. The uh, legislative process with regard to raw water charges, the mandate for raw water charges comes from Section 56 to 60 of the National Water Act, and it requires the Department of Water and Sanitation to establish a, pri a pricing strategy for raw water charges. The raw water pricing strategy was first developed in uh, November 1999. And a revised strategy was approved for implementation with effect from April 2007. And that is the strategy which we are using to uh, uh, currently to uh, uh, determine um, our water use charges. Um, and this consultation which takes place uh, starts in September of each year with a view to having uh, tariffs approved by the end of the year so that those can be taken into and accommodated in, uh, in the budget um, of uh, during the, uh, uh, for implementation from uh, April uh, 2021, 20, uh, April 2021 onwards. The uh, raw water tariffs also will then uh, be part of the input uh, uh, costs, which uh, the water boards have to take into account in terms of their uh, tariff determination. And uh, they have now already started their process of consultation for the uh, next financial year. The raw water charges, the type of charges, there are four charges, which is the water resource management charge, the water resources development, and that's the use of the waterworks, the waste discharge or levy, and then the water research levy, and then the registered water user sectors that we, we provide is domestic, industrial, mining, energy, irrigation, and then the SFRA, which is forestry. It refers to stream flow reduction activities, which only the water resource management charge is accrued to that. The uh, determination pr uh, process is uh, it's a budget planning process. Uh, for cost, uh, cost, uh, cost of activities are based on zero-based budgeting and economic fundamentals such as the CPI. The price set, uh, setting process is demand-driven, registered volumes, system yield and asset values. And the consultation process, uh, re it's regional, it's sector-specific, and there's nas national consultation meeting with, with new meetings with, with uh, stakeholders as well. I'm now going to move down to slide 24 very quickly and just talk to the consultation process that's taken place thus far. Uh, stakeholders have been consulted through virtual meetings and sending the tariff proposal, proposals through by email. Uh, we, uh, it's been necessary to do it in that way because of the various levels of lockdown that we've been operating under once we started the, uh, the consultation uh, process. We've had nine virtual provincial consultations uh, uh, we're held in the six province uh, in, in six uh, nine virtual provincial consultations were held. Uh, three physical consultation meetings were held in the in Kamati Wasutu CMA area. All other provinces CMAs clustered consulted their stakeholders through emails. National Treasury and Selga were also consulted. The sector specific and national stakeholder consultation meetings were held on the seventh and the twentieth of August. And we've had written comments received from AgriSA, the World uh, Wide Foundation, uh, Worldwide Fund, sorry, uh, uh, Amatola Water Board, and the Joint Water Forum. Uh, in terms of the uh, just a summary of the stakeholders' uh, uh, inputs that we've got, a total 3,809 uh, stakeholders have participated, and uh, from we've broken that down per sector. 2,815 agriculture, 895 domestic and industry, 46 forestry, and 53 national and provincial. And you'll see those numbers compared with the 2020-2021 uh, 20, uh, 20, 20, tariff cycle. So there's quite an increase in terms of the number of stakeholders we've reached during the current uh, stakeholder process. I then give you three slides, uh, Chair, which I won't go into detail.
but you have them in the presentation of comments that have been received from various organizations. We've got from Selga, we've got from National Treasury, from Agri SA, Forestry SA, Amatola Water Board, the World Wide Fund. And uh, that uh, I will then go back to slide 13, where uh, Moshidi will run through the uh, specific uh, uh, charges. I'll start at slide 12. Moshidi, are you there? Can you take over? And uh, just tell me when to change the slides. Rashidi? Um, thank you, DJ. Uh, good You'll evening. have to put your uh, camera on as well, Rashidi. Oh. There we are. Um, thank you, DJ, and good evening uh, to all the members of parliament. Um, slide 13 is actually showing the capping that is approved within the pricing strategy. Uh, in terms of um, where are the limits that the pricing strategy um, is, is actually restricted to go uh, so that the water can be made av available. Now, on this particular slide, we are trying to show the kind of um, percentage increases that we should have received in terms of the pricing strategy. Now, we are showing the three um, charges or the three sectors that we are having or the charges is the water resource management charge and um, the related infrastructure charge and, and um, the forestry sector charges that um, we have re uh, recommended to, to increase between 0% and 4.6% for resource management charge. And if you were to look at the pricing um, strategy recommended, we would have uh, increased by a maximum of 16.99%. When you look at the irrigation charge for water resource management, we would have increased by a range of 1.2 percent to 17.71, uh, while forestry we would have increased up to a maximum of 376 percent, but we have kept uh, the proposed increase at 10 percent because that was agreed with uh, Agri SA. But looking at these, um, the pricing strategy uh, increases was supposed to be kept at the PPI rate of which in April it was sitting at 1.2% um, added to a 10% that was recommended by the pricing strategy. That is why the amount seems higher than what we are recommending. Now, the reason why we recommended these low rates, um, we presented to our stakeholders so that um, for now, because of COVID, uh, um, that is still within us, uh, we need to find a way of reducing the percentage increases, but at a later stage, when the economy comes back um, to, to full capacity, um, then we will find a way of recouping back the, the revenue that was lost. The next slide, please. This slide relates to the infrastructure charges, of which for domestic and industrial, again, we have kept the percentage increases between four, uh, sorry, between zero and 4.6%, meaning that uh, different schemes obviously are charging different prices. And then with irrigation, we have also kept it at the maximum of 10% because there was an agreement with uh, the forestry on that sector. Next slide. <coughs> Now, the, the implications uh, of these reduced charges. Here, if we were using the pricing strategy alone, we would have been increasing the, the budget um, or the potential revenue by uh, 568 uh, million, but now, because of the, the COVID, we have decided to, to limit the percentage increases and looking at the calculations that we are facing, we are going to have a revenue shortfall of 13.3 uh, million. Now, this will definitely do have an impact on the functions that the catchment management agencies needs to, 
to undertake. But again, as I have said earlier, some of the functions that can be postponed will be postponed until such time as we are able to, to fund them adequately as we claw back on this lost revenue. Next slide, please. On the infrastructure charge, which includes um, um, the, the, the portions that were to be paid to, to the TCTA, we are going to have a shortfall of 236 million based on the, the limitations as well, um, using the, the same motivation of, of COVID. Next slide, please. Now, when it comes to the TCTA charges, these uh, are charges that are relating to, to the loans that uh, have to be paid. Unfortunately, there is no way that we can avoid making these commitments. And one of the arrangements within the department is that whatever money is being received, it first pays the loans that are being charged. So with the 0% with the uh, increase that was uh, passed through with the 2020-21 uh, um, charges, these uh, um, the, the CUC was also affected because it was included uh, with the water boards. Now, with that, the, there are some discussions that are currently happening, and um, we, uh, uh, the, the perspective now is that for domestic supply, the schemes that the TCTA was charging on will remain at a zero percent, but all other schemes that were not necessarily supplying um, households and domestic use, those would be considered for increases. Next slide, please. I think the following slides from this one are just showing all the schemes of TCTA and how they are meant to be increasing from the 2020 tariffs to the 2021. The only uh, difference is that all these slides are based on the assumption that the 2020-21 tariffs would have increased as it was initially proposed, but uh, some of these schemes are not going to change. So um, I think the next couple of slides that are talking to the TCTA tariffs, we can skip in the interest of time. Okay, next slide. Okay, the DG has covered this slide, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, honorable members, that was the presentation. Any indication of members who wants to, to interact with the presentation? Honorable Sikhwai and Honorable Mashiro. Proceed, Honorable Sikhwai. Chairperson, uh, thank you very much. I think the, the, this presentation is exactly uh, touching on issues that we raise when government is confronted, when government is confronted with the challenges of the people that it represents, it sits back, government sits back, ponder and think how best can we deal with the issues, the elements that would then benefit the people. I think this presentation is, 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 is delayed. I think we need to raise that to the minister. This presentation is delayed because it deals with the issues, how best can we improve so that we are able to meet our people as we meet the legislation halfway. 
just that we are getting it in the, at, 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 in, in the morning. This presentation, we're getting it in the morning when we're tired. How I wish that uh, perhaps uh, we give him this presentation and then we come back and, and, and perhaps uh, raise the issues that we think are limitations in the presentation. But I think this presentation is helping us. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, Lower the hand. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, and I move from a previous that the, the, this presentation is for 22. And if that is the case, I think uh, uh, this might be the correct time for us to be given this, this presentation. However, in the in the in the in the in the input by the department, the, it seems the, the consultation with all stakeholders are already being done, and there is a, a, a agreement. What I'm not sure is to what role must we play either to agree or disagree with, 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 with especially if you have already agreed with SA, you agree with them, every, every stakeholder that, that is, is of importance for them to either can accept or reject the, 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 the proposal it is now done. So if it comes to us now to say we are now kickstarting the processes of um, consultation in order for us to can implement it for the purposes of 2021-22 financial year, what is expected of us to make as input when in actual fact, there is already consultation made and, cons and all stakeholders have either agreed, you have already given in there, you have already it is, it, um, stuck to your guns on, on the, but I must say, this is the correct way of doing things for you to come at the time when it is go going, to, building up to adoption. I'm sure that's what we, we must appreciate this time that uh, we are getting it prior it being uh, uh, when there's still time for us to can discuss. But I don't get a sense, um, Trevor and, 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 and the department. What are you expecting us to do? Does Do we have, a, a, for instance, where you are proposing 1.2%, can we still say no 3% or 1%? And if we do that, what is going to happen to the already agreed upon process with the the, the the affected uh, stakeholders that you have already consulted. But, but in, in principle, I think it is the correct way for you to come uh, prior you uh, uh, um, implementing. But the, 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 the problem is that it, it comes as prior, as post consulted with the stakeholders. Then, then Parliament's is a process this is just for, for it to pass it because it is already being agreed with the, with the, with, with, with the stakeholders. And, 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 and I think it, the good as it might be, it just make us to be a, a compliant process. It, 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 we're sitting for compliance purposes. And I'm not saying it is wrong, but I'm simply saying we really need to get a way of not, not being made to be a compliant officers in, 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 in wanting to come to the conclusion. But I must appreciate the fact that uh, we are being consulted prior the the, the implementation of the uh, 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 um, in, intended intention. Thanks, Chair. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Masheho. I don't see any other hand. <clears throat> Can I get the department to comment on, on what? Was, okay. My oh, yes. Oh, I didn't say. Okay, proceed. I was I was linking proceed, it to ma. the comments that uh, Honorable Ma Mashiko has just said. Uh, in our last joint meeting when we dealt with this matter, there's been a very strong sentiment that emerged that um. Uh, there was a feeling that Parliament had no meaningful role in the water tariff determination process. And then, uh, so 
in fact, what uh, the, I had the colleagues saying that there was no meaningful consultation with parliament that took place, even though there was an opportunity to do so. I'm just trying to amplify what uh, Honorable uh, Mashiko has just been saying, to say, uh, I think we, we shouldn't say that we are going to, our role will be just to simply uh, then come after the facts. Uh, the extent, to an extent that at that time, you recall the colleagues who also rejected uh, uh, the, the, the presentation uh, as, as the community, then we couldn't even uh, approve the pro proposed bulk tariffs. The mere fact that the minister then went and then uh, implemented a zero tariff, it's a clear sign that definitely parliament has got a role to play in these matters. So I should think it's among those lines that then we appreciate that maybe given the time now, now that this, this presentation has been shared with us, and then we can then start, it's a way of the department trying to consult with us. Then we can say, we look at this presentation, um, uh, uh, apply our minds as and when we reconvene soon, then we'll be able then to meaningfully contribute to say then, uh, but I think we must uh, then commend the department for doing what they're doing because definitely it's towards the next financial year tariff determination process. That's my contribution, Chairperson, thank you. Um, thank you, thank you, uh, Chair Mutambi. Um, as I give it to uh, acting DG and minister, because they're here to to talk to your comment. Just to understand DG, your your your, because usually when you talk talk about the increment, you are not mentioning the baseline. Um, like like you look at the rent water, we were so excited that they are at six percent, but the baseline was very high. <clears throat> so so. What what is the baseline um, on 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 these tariffs? Um, because we must never um, forget that we, we are representing the constituency. Um, that at some point uh, will serve the system than the people if we are not. A balance in that. Um, Acting DG and your team and minister will be the last person. Can I raise our concern a little bit on this chair and then as oh. they answer, they answer everything. Okay. You're welcome, yes. Dr. Gouman. Stofile. Stofile. Um, yes, Stofile from, from Salk. Chair, as they are going to respond, we will, uh, uh, I will plead with them from political level that this consultation with member municipalities, it should also be done with us as an association. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm told by my technical team that the consultation has never happened with us. And, uh, and and we don't have really a big issues, but it's important that um, within the IGR framework, um, the local government association it should be uh, consulted and and engage on what is proposed. Otherwise, we are going to pick up uh, unnecessary battles. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and that is to feel it. Um, acting DG and the team. Um, thanks. Uh, and then, honorable. yeah, proceed, uh, acting uh, DG. Thanks, Honourable Chair. Um, Honourable Chair, I'll just deal with them in the reverse order. Uh, uh, just to Honourable yeah. Stofile, uh, my 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 understanding, and Moshidi will confirm that there was engagement with Selga as well. But I will just reconfirm that again. And uh, in one of the slides, I did show that uh, uh, Selga had been consulted 
as well, but I will reconfirm that again. Um, with regard to the baseline figure, I'm going to ask Mashidi to just step in with me there as well, but I, I did indicate up front that uh, we determine the, 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 uh, what the tariffs should be uh, from a zero-based budgeting point of view. So we, we, we look at all of our costs from a zero base, and we then determine what we, we think the tariff should be, and we work on that as a departure point, and we work backwards until we get to a point where we are in, uh, in agreement uh, with the various uh, uh, stakeholders. Um, and, and Honourable Chair, the, the point raised by Honourable Mashecho, um, we'll have to seek guidance from, from yourselves in terms of how we handle these consultations going forward. Of course, the, uh, the, the, the raw water tariffs uh, ordinarily, uh, once Parliament has, uh, has uh, approved the, the, the policy in which we determine the, the tariffs, uh, which is what we're working on, that policy which I referred to as having been approved in 2007. We then use that policy as the basis to do the calculations and uh, the outcome of those calculations and the negotiations with, uh, with, the, uh, with the stakeholders are then presented uh, to the minister uh, to then seek also the concurrence of, uh, of, of National Treasury. Uh, so that's a process that is normally uh, normally followed, but you'll have to uh, just advise in terms of the step we would have to take uh, uh, going forward with regard to uh, a, a different way, uh, a set of consultations also with, uh, uh, with, with, with Parliament. Uh, so I think I've covered those, uh, those areas. Uh, thanks, Chair. I think you said Minister would come in now. Thank you very much. Uh, let's give it to DM first before the minister. DM Maslova. Thanks, Chair. Well, thanks, Chair. I, I, I think a uh, chairperson, um, uh, Honorable um, Coach uh, Comrade Faitish is correct. Um, you have received the presentation now, and um, like you requested us before, that uh, you wanted to have a sense of what is being consulted in the roadmap. The consultation is not concluded. Uh, you could see that uh, the bulk of the work has been, uh, has been concluded and comments are being received, uh, which is one of the issues that you raised before. And I think it's important that because uh, these timelines are time bound. Certain decisions have to be made uh, early next year by the minister so that uh, we should be able to factor in, even in terms of the budgeting, that uh, the committee should be able to seize this opportunity that uh, uh, if there are issues of input while the consultations are continuing on the other side. Uh, you don't miss the boat so that at least uh, we don't have uh, the matter that you raised before to say you were left out in the process. But uh, you could see that various sectors, whether industries, whether agriculture, afforestation, and everybody, they've started to make uh, uh, their own input. Those are the things, Chair, that I would say, and this consultation is an important one. And the Salka met Ubabustofil. Uh, there's been interaction, but probably the, the issues that those uh, who are representing these organizations, because one of the problems around this consultation is the level of people that get sent to these meetings. And when they get sent to these meetings, we want people to come to these meetings with full mandate so that these institutions will not come back or the various sectors will come back and say we're not consulted. Let them be represented at the right levels because we don't want to be accused that we're administratively and say there is an attendance register, this is what was said. But um, those will be my words, uh, Chair, to say this is an ongoing work that is on the table right now. But uh, it has to be wrapped up so that the executing authority can make a determination. Thank you. 
Thank you, uh, dear Mashobo. Uh, Minister Sisulu. Chair, I'm unable to raise my hand. Can I just come in? Okay. Uh, uh, Chair, in, uh, in, uh, while I was doing the responses, I did indicate that uh, Moshidi, my colleague, might have one or two points to respond to as well. I don't know whether you would care to just give her that opportunity. Okay, let, come, let her come in. Thank you. Moshidi, can you hear me? Yeah, she's coming now. Thanks, Chair. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, DM has covered the point where, with our engagements with Sarga because we did engage um, with them and um, they, they did not necessarily have an objection on the, the raw water tariffs. But I wanted to also kind of uh, speak to the big one that was referred to. Um, I need to point out, Chair, that um, when you look at all the raw water tariffs in totality, we have well over 400 components um, of tariffs per scheme, per uh, a sector that uh, they are being charged. So that is the only reason why we did not attach it in the presentation, but we can add it. Uh, I mean, we can send it to you. If I can make an example on the uh, water resource management charge, um, the, the tariff increases that are, are proposed for Limpopo Northwest, um, as an example, there was a 0% increase there, which is going to remain at 4.88 cents per cubic meter, while uh, in the area of Ingomati Usutu, there was that 4.6%. It's going to increase from, from 3.70 cents to 4.18 cents. An example on the infrastructure charge for domestic and industrial, we are kind of increasing from something like 33.63 cents per cubic meter to 33.95 cents per cubic meter. But again, these are just few numbers out of the excess of uh, uh, over 400 uh, individual tariffs um, of which we can send uh, forward for consideration of, um, of the parliament members. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Memutsidi. Uh, Minister Sisulu, we there's we have lost the Minister Sisulu. Um, I will then take this opportunity to take it back to you, uh, Chair Motambi, for you to close the meeting. Um, yeah. Thank you, Chairperson. I think we must appreciate uh, the attendance of the ministers and the deputy ministers to this meeting. As we've indicated, uh, then to also register our disappointment uh, on the conduct of National Treasury when we are to deal with this matter that affects our people. But we've taken a resolution that we are going to call them for them to come and account to us also on their failure to support the, 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 the water boards to this effect. Having, having them complied with the COVID-19 COVID pandemic response. I think we must appreciate the effort that the minister Sisulu has taken to make sure that then there is zero uh, increase on the tariffs on the side of the water boards. I think also then uh, we can then talk to Salga to also then talk to the members and uh, municipalities as to understand what actually happened to say that then when uh, water boards were not uh, raising their tariffs, you find the situation where in municipality were then raising the 
the tariffs were raised is the same constituency we've been talking about, the people that have been affected by uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is the matter, at least now that towards the next financial year tariff review, these are the matters that you assist with, then we'll urge the colleagues to also go and read the presentation as given to us this evening by the department so that you are able to express the views also in so doing we'll also be doing our 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 our, our to getting the view of our, all the various stakeholders to that effect to make sure that then this consultation it doesn't just become a malicious one it's actual consultation in the process bearing in mind that um, if the people we represent that suffers on the ground. I would like to also thank the colleagues. We have already exceeded the committee allocated time by almost 21 minutes, which is a clear sign that we are all committed to making sure that uh, we serve the constituencies that we have elected us to represent them in parliament to the best of our ability. So, I should think there is another meeting. I'm not so sure of the date where you know, we're still going to meet as a joint committee. And then what I've also then uh, learned out of these joint uh, committee meetings that we're holding, it assists us not to operate in silos. In, in so doing, we're also then uh, trying to then enforce the spirit of the district development model which uh, the executive has launched. So as, as we do that, then that matters that of mutual concern, then we then deal with them holistically once and for all. And we want to appreciate you, Chairperson, for you having this, seen this necessity for us to continuously engage I want to also thank the teams from the departments, uh, COCTA and the DWS, including the colleagues from SALGA and the colleagues who I, I see majority of them are from waterboards. Uh, we want to also appreciate you also having needed the call of this committee, including that of the Minister, and we know that this has created a very huge uh, financial burden on your side, but we are saying for the sake of our people, this is an abnormal situation that we happen to find ourselves in and it too shall pass. So let me then adjourn the meeting on the view that we are going to reconvene soon before parliament rises. And in that meeting, I think we'll co-sign a letter to, to the Minister of Finance so that they also come and account to us on how are they dealing with all these matters as they've raised. And then we'll still continue to encourage the, the ministers to engage the counterparts. I know as the chairperson has said, in their last engagement, there was a meeting where in the deputy minister of finance attended. So we don't know what actually happened that then made them not to, to then uh, also attend the, the other meeting that then followed suit after the one that he attended. So I think these are the matters that will continue to engage until we are all, all satisfied that um, our people are given uh, the affordable rates at the same time receiving the water. So then I shall adjourn this meeting. For those colleagues who are in culture portfolio committee, we are not meeting in the morning. As agreed, we'll meet in the evening at 19 hours after plenary. Uh, based on the fact that uh, there are matters that the AG and the department are still finalizing on their annual report. Then we'll discuss with you in the evening on the next date where we're going to engage the department before we rise. Thank you so much, colleagues. The meeting gets adjourned. Thank, Thank you, Chair. Thank, Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Chair. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.